Carl Dieter and by Siobhan Maguire. Thank you both very much indeed for coming into us this morning. Those taunts about Melanie McCarthy, McNamara's murder are really quite disturbing. I mean, very disturbing, aren't they? And this, this, this kid was a, it was a child. He was a child, really, when he allegedly murdered this woman. Have you been looking at, at that, Siobhan? Yeah, I mean, so this is a teenager who was charged with um, murdering 16-year-old Melanie um, McCarthy McNamara and uh, the various uh, graffiti that was scrawled on the, on the cell that he was in. Um, it is extremely disturbing. This is uh, Daniel MacDonald who uh, wrote on a cell wall uh, uh, various things like two in the head and references to um, the lady who uh, was shot in the back seat of a car in Brookville in Tallaght last year. Um, I think it's 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 very kind of gangster style. The various things that are written, uh, it's um, making various um, you know claims against the uh, boyfriend of Melanie. Yeah. It's it's very unpleasant stuff. It's it's, it's very poignant. <laughs> you know, I mean, these are kids. Like you know, he was underage. Even saying, "I never thought it would turn out yeah. like this. I feel like a scumbag. I don't feel it." I am one, you know. It, like it, it's, it just shows you, doesn't it? Just how yeah. awful a life these, these, this kid was living, both of them, and then the tragedy for Melanie's family. I think, uh, for me, my heart just really goes out to the family of the victim. I mean, whatever about the way that he was raised, he still did this. Mm. Uh, and for the, for the family of the victim to have to hear that he's kind of almost relishing everything that he yeah. did. Allegedly, it, Carl. It, uh, sorry, allegedly. Alleged, yeah. Allegedly, I should correct myself there. But um, if, if the allegation turns out to be true, I'm sure that during many years of incarceration, he'll have an opportunity to rethink his position. But it's, it's, a, it's an awful way to, to set the tone for, for the case going forward. Yeah, it's a real insight into it, isn't it, into what is going on in teenage gangland as well. I mean, this, as you say, it's like something out of the wire, some of this. Um, what about the uh, Irish water? It's extraordinary, isn't it? It was 50 million this time yesterday. It's now 86 million. Absolutely. Who knew what when? Well, I mean, it, you know, to pardon the pun, but it's like we've been drip fed so much information about it over the last week. So, yes, it is now at the grand total of 86 million and counting. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we now know some various things that uh, three former county managers were employed in the utility, um, that there will be uh, over 500 staff um, come next May uh, with 300 already in place. So you have to ask the question, why spend so much on external consultants when you have um, a, a staff of 300 in place already? Surely these are, are key people, intelligent people, capable of doing their job. Why do you need to you know, be looking at a bill of 44 million on uh, IBM or Accenture? And, and also, why are you giving bonuses to these people when you're employing so many external experts? Yeah. I just look at this and I see we are spending 86 million on something that we already have that is working. Now fine, it has problems, but does it need 86 million to try and figure out what we already have? And that's not even the rump of the cost, because that's going to come when the metering goes in, which will cost about 539 euro per household. So you're looking at well in excess of a half a billion in that. Now water is expensive. There's huge energy costs, there's treatment costs. And I've always been aware of this. I grew up in reclaimed desert in Los Angeles. People used to have signs on their toilet, if it's yellow, let it mellow, if it's brown, flush <laughs> yeah. it down. Like they really took their water conservation seriously. but. This can be a, a huge problem if we don't get on top of it. You see, at the moment we're all arguing over, oh, it's, it's a waste of money. But in time, with the way that Dublin is growing, we're actually looking at a future where we either have to tap into the Shannon or look at desalination. Mm -hmm. And that's in a country where you'd be forgiven for thinking so, that mean, it does nothing but rain. And doesn't that mean that it's right, even if there is a huge initial outlay, to, to, to start metering water and to start raising money from people who are using water to, to maintain the facilities? The, the, the idea and the ethos of it is absolutely correct. The question is whether we're doing it efficiently when we already have a lot of expertise in that area. And there's always a concern that really what's happening is, is that this new institution is simply getting experts to, to put these reports in place so that if something goes wrong they can say, oh well we consulted with all of these big firms. And that's not really the way you do things when you have a lot of expertise already. I think yeah. what's needed here is most definitely is clarity on the issue. There, I mean we're, we're getting uh, this information now but it's a, a hugely contentious issue, always has been. Fine Gael and Labour abolished them when in government, rejected them in opposition, uh, are now reintroducing the charges. Uh, you had Fianna Fáil um, um, talking about the char charges under an EU IMF agreement and now rejecting them. It's just it, it's so contentious they were, now. they were quite upfront yesterday, though, the, the people from Irish Water. Uh -huh. I mean, there was, there was no... It does seem to have moved on at this point now to the department, doesn't it? 
you know, at, at what point did they know and what kind of oversight did they have of the spending? It seems that Irish Water were, were quite clear about the fact that they were spending this kind yeah. of money on consultants. I, yeah. At least for their part, they didn't try and cover anything mm -hmm. up. I think what looked bad in this is that Phil Hogan effectively said that I wasn't really keeping track of all this while it happened and, and I don't think that's the right message to send when we're facing a lot of cuts in various areas and then we hear these huge expenditures coming out. There is a way of managing this so that people feel that our money is being spent correctly and, and with good economic sense and that really I think is the message that's coming out. This could be the best invested money we've ever had but what seems to be the, the storyline behind it is that it's waste and really we need to know how is it going to give a benefit in the end to the people who have to buy yeah. this water? And we need to know also, I mean, maybe they do need to spend 86 million on consultants. You know, I suppose that all the details will come out, we'll get clarity on that. Yeah. What about a totally different story? A plastic surgery app. This is a game for nine-year-olds where they can perform plastic surgery on, on what? It's, it's a cartoon figure. It's yes. extraordinary, this. So this is an app. It has, it has now been removed amid a kind of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people giving out about it on social media yesterday. And basically what the app is, it has the, the name of Plastic Surgery and Plastic Doctor and Plastic Hospital Office for Barbie. Uh, it's for Barbie. aimed at children as young as uh, nine years of age. And basically what it is, uh, you have the opportunity to operate on a character, um, a kind of cartoon character, uh, which uh, the app will tell you. Um, the, the character, this unfortunate girl has so much extra weight that no diet can help her. In our clinic she can go through a surgery called liposuction that will make her slim <coughs> and beautiful. Will you that operate, is doctor? It really is, yeah. Now, as I say, it's been r removed uh, um, last night, I believe, but um, you've had, uh, you know, Mary Mitchell O'Connor, uh, Fine Gael deputy, came out yesterday saying just how disgraceful this was. The National Parents Council aren't happy about it. Um, it really is quite disgusting. Yeah, I, I would put this in the same kind of area as the sexualization of children at a very young age. I think it's really inappropriate. Now, uh, I suppose that, that the problem in part is that uh, kids, and I think girls in particular, start an apprenticeship of self-loathing at younger and younger ages. Mm. And at age nine, is this the way you show them? Is that if you're carrying some puppy fat, which will change as you grow up, the, the, the solution is to, is to start looking it's at surgery. plastic surgery? The solution is lifestyle. We do have an obesity problem, yeah. and lots of countries do. But that should be about diet. Get out, get some fresh air. And if you want to say, well, on one hand, at least we're saying, you know, look at plastic surgery from its positive aspects, because it helps lots of people. It helps people who are who hate palettes, themselves and they look in the mirror yeah. and, and, and it fixes their lives. But, but you know, why not have an app that is about being a surgeon that helps sick kids or something? I think that, that the way this was marketed and who it was aimed at, it, it was just wrong yeah, on so many right, different levels. Yeah, and you're right, it is that message that, you know, don't do anything else about it, just take a knife to it, pay for it to be done, you know? What about, speaking of paying, stars are earning <coughs> big money in a matter of nights. Beyonce getting 2.9 million for two nights work. Where is she getting this money? Well, this is uh, coming in from uh, ticket sales um, in two nights in the O2. So we have um, uh, a breakdown from the US-based Polestar that puts um, the Dublin venue uh, ahead of the likes of uh, New York's Madison Square Gardens in terms of the amount of income uh, that are, these big stars are receiving. You and, have and is this money into their pocket now, or is oh. this the total sales money uh, generated by ticket oh, sales? Oh yeah, this is this is what she would have raked in from wow. Irish fans, which is. But I, I mean, I'm not surprised because when you look at kind of ticket sales and trends in Ireland over the last few years, I mean, we pay sometimes up to double to what our Two European uh, counterparts is amazing. The same it just shows you, doesn't it, that's where the money is. It's live <laughs> performances yeah. now. It's no longer CD yeah. sales or iTunes or whatever. Yeah. I, I was looking at that story and I was thinking, if you change it from anyone else, like if Beyonce was a banker and you heard that they earned two million in two days, you know, the country would shut down with yeah. outrage. <laughs> You know, just because you're a talented musician, is that a justifiable amount? Are the ticket prices too high or is there something unique to Ireland that makes us an expensive place to do entertainment? Yeah, and, and so for me, point. I just, I always find these things interesting because no one ever has any begrudging element when you look at artists and politicians never do because they know that they could never compete with that artist. But when it comes to something like business where they can get their fingers into it, there's always this opinion that, oh, you're overpaid and you see it in in surgeries, you see it in hospitals, you see it in all these different things where people do really good things for the world and whereas all these musicians, they're, they're great, but, but are they fixing lives? Are they, are they really doing anything to warrant two million euro? And why do we think it's great when they do it and not when someone else does? That's a fair point, Carl. Well, listen, we're going to leave it there this morning. Thank you both very much indeed for coming into us, Carl and Siobhan. And now it is time for the sports news with Claire McNamara. Claire. Thanks, Keelan. Good morning. We start with action at the Australian.